this entire chemical weapons incident that the Syrian uh, government would allow them in and there have been statements by Jafari who is a Syrian representative to the UN stating that they would be given full access immediately within Syria and they've been there for a week before they've been given any access to the site. They attempted to go yesterday and apparently they were fired upon in what was a pre-rehearsal to today and they've finally managed to get to the site today and uh, the hindrance of this access has raised a lot of questions as to the political um, games which are possibly being played by the Syrians and most of all the Russians who actually have a larger presence within the city than the Syrians. There are Russian military police checkpoints around Douma, Russian military police is in Douma in force and there is no Syrian army there as per agreement uh, with uh, Jaysh al-Islam before they headed off to Jrablus. So there is a written agreement preventing the Syrian army from actually going to the area officially which is why the presence of the Russians is so, so strong and they have access to these different sites. Jaysh al-Islam, that's one of the, the, the rebel groups there. Um, but, but why can they be doing this? Because you can't really hide the use of chemical weapons, can you? Well, to an extent, I mean, the, 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 the chemical weapons attack, the suspected attack, has been used either through sarin or, or chlorine gas. Now, chlorine's a gas and, and sarin's a liquid. So if sarin was used, the effects would stay for a number of months. However, chlorine as a gas, it is possible to tamper with the scene to an extent. I mean, if it's used, then naturally it will erode uh, throughout the, the, the previous days. And, but some, some remains will stay. Now, more important than that is the actual, the actual civilian uh, uh, casualties who, who were buried those who were killed in the attack. Because now you can get sample from them, can't you? Absolutely. Now, they are a, a crucial piece of evidence, and they're buried in a site which is unknown to the Syrian government and to the Russians, but it is now known to the chemical weapons inspectors as to the precise location of that site. They've been apparently told by activists and people who were there. Now, the evidence in that particular site is of crucial importance, and if you saw the, the statement of the, of the OPCW today stating that they wanted to go back, I think it's in reference to perhaps visiting visiting that site. Now, the issues that arise are, are twofold. Firstly, the access they would possibly be given by Russians if they went back. And second of all, do you reveal the, such a location? Is there a moral aspect to this, mm. actually telling the Russians and the Syrians as to the present of su presence of such a site, you know, which is going to be a graveyard, essentially? Is this something which the activists do, or they know that this um, kind of site could be very crucial, and so they hide it from the Syrian, uh, from the Syrian government, and from the Russians? I mean, perhaps that might be a ploy which they would have used. It's something which they. Uh, definitely done in the past in different areas, uh, hiding, ev hiding evidence, they would ultimately call it. But what we now have is, is, is a problem because if they want to get back to this site, they can only do so with Russian and Syrian presence. And, and if they reveal this site, then immediately it might raise questions as to why they're going back. And then you know, it might create another further crisis to add to this long wait they've had to wait for a week. You know? So uh, restrictions have been placed on this team and they've managed to get some sort of sample whether they'll go back will be clearer in the, in the forthcoming days, for sure. Thank you very much. That's uh, Danny Mackey, the S British uh, Syrian journalist who just returned from Damascus. Now let's take a look at some of the other stories making the news. The Indian government has approved the introduction of the death penalty for anyone convicted of raping a 